Jeff Waltman has addressed the Orlando media ahead of the NBA draft. He didn't really reveal much, but he did reveal one thing that clues us in a little bit to what they're expecting from the Orlando Magic this season. It's a new phase. It's a new era. It's a new episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is June 20th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross. Reich. I'm the expert insight editor over at Orlando magic daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, Jeff Weltman addresses the Orlando media ahead of the NBA draft, gives us all the usual talking points, but it felt a little bit different this time. It felt like there is a real push to advance this team. We'll read between the lines a little bit on today's episode of Locked On Magic. So we'll talk about two center options that the Magic should be looking at in this year's draft. We'll get to all that coming up here. In just a moment, but first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. The search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. When it comes to this point of the draft process, you know, draft week, we are now Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, two days away from draft night. All this is going to be over very, very soon. When we get to this point in the process, I always want to urge caution. Um, Don't believe, only believe half of what you hear and Think half of I don't know what that phrase is. Um, it's it's the old it's the old Fellowship of the Rings line. Um, I like half of you half as well as you should like, and like less than half of you half as much as you deserve, or something something to that effect. It's a lot of word soup. It's a lot of word jumble, and, and it's a lot of the same kind of tired phrases. Um, Jeff Waltman spoke to the media on Monday and gave us a lot of the same kind of themes and. And repeated the same kind of phrases that we've heard from him throughout several draft processes now. He's been with this team for a little while. We get kind of the rhythm and cadence of what to expect from him on the week of the draft. Um, You know, it's the same, you know, that the lines that always stick out are, you know, when we draft a young player, we want to make sure there is a pathway for them to succeed, for them to play. Um, You know, it's, it's not... They don't want to just draft a player and, and just see make things work. They, they want to make sure that that player is positioned to succeed. And I do think that is something that's really important about Jeff Weltman's approach is he does very much care about the person that they're drafting as much as he cares about the player that they're drafting. And the person and the player are very intertwined and, and all that stuff. When it comes to trades, it's you know, you know we're always going through different scenarios and different possibilities and, and talking on a number of fronts. He was a little bit more candid perhaps in saying that, you know, you are trying to guard your information a little bit. You know, you're maybe not as forthright or as candid as you you can be at all times, but at a certain point when a deal needs to get done, you have to be frank and and forward about what you're trying to accomplish so that you can get that thing over the finish line. If if there's one thing you should learn from me, it's that trades are actually really hard. Um, They're not as easy as you could, you could, you could think go to, Go to any number of blogs, including ours, uh, OrlandoMagicDaily.com, on on Tuesday morning. You will find how difficult it can be to put together a workable trade. And and, and really, at this point, even now, it's not about pinning down that final trade that you want to pursue. It's still about creating the frameworks and and figuring out where those pressure points are. When it comes to mock drafts, you know, Weltman again said that, you know, there's a lot of if-then-this or if-then-now or going through all those scenarios. Everyone is still getting their ducks in a row. And, you know, Jeff Weltman, I think, has my favorite line every year at the draft saying, you do a mock draft every single day, it's going to be different every single day. It will never play out the same way twice. The only issue is it only counts once. 
The mock draft everyone does on Thursday is the one that counts. Having said that, though, I do think this draft feels different. As similar as this draft feels, and, and, and you know, Weltman says, you know, we've got a great opportunity with we'll two lottery picks, and 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 you know, we're we really worked hard to earn this flexibility, hard years to get this kind of flexibility and this kind of opportunity. It's not one we're going to waste. All that stuff. This draft does feel different. And it's because of that product on the floor. It's because the Magic are a better team today than they were two years ago, than they were three years ago. They're not at the beginning stage of a rebuild. They don't just need to get talent and figure out what works. The Magic right now have to build a team. J.J. Redick on the old man in the three the other, or yesterday said point blank, the Magic, if everything breaks right, should be a playoff team. They're doing things the right way. They've been patient. They've been solid. They've got two really good young players. Before any of the changes, a lot of people do, do think that, hey, this, this Magic team's kind of coming. And whether Jeff Weltman wants to freely admit it or not, that does change the outlook for this draft that does change things on this draft. And, you know, I don't think this is any different than the principles that Jeff Weltman has, has, has laid out, but he put it in the plainest terms that they're hoping the magic that the franchise that the team has reached a point where rookies are not gifted minutes where whoever the magic draft at six and 11 are not guaranteed playing time. As much as you want to provide that pathway to play, they've got to earn their keep. Because what the Magic already have is established or is establishing itself. There is going to be perhaps less tolerance for mistakes. A, a simplification of roles for rookies. Rookies coming off the bench. And whether, whether you know... These are all great ideals, obviously. And, and look, we all want to be at that point where a rookie contributes, not because the team has invested so much in him and, and put a lot of pressure on him and, and wants him to make mistakes, but contributes because he could play a role and help the team win. That, that's obviously where we all want to go. But to make that admission now, to, to make it, frankly, so publicly, I think does say something. I don't think that that is nothing. Like Jeff Waltman's very guarded about his information. The guy, you know, he 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 does. He's able to say a lot without saying a lot. So again, like yes, this is obviously where the Magic want to end up. But for an off season where we've been obsessing over Paolo Bencaro's playoff or bus line, to me, this is kind of the first admission from Jeff Waltman and from Magic management beyond saying we need to level up which is vague enough to mean whatever you need it to mean. To me, this is a, a big and clear statement that they expect to be better next year. That not only do they expect to be better this, next year, but that who they draft isn't essential to what they do. It's important. Don't get me wrong. Get this pick right. Add some more talent. All that's important. But it's not essential anymore. This team has graduated to a new phase, to a new level, to a new era. What they need to get out of this draft this year certainly isn't the same as last year at the number one pick, but also is it the same as it was the year before when they had two picks the last time and drafted Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner. The Magic, and, and Jeff Weltman especially, understand and know that they understand and know how close they are or, or what they're sniffing around for. Now, do I want to read into, oh, that means Jeff is going to trade the pick? No. Do I want to read into that, oh, that means Jeff is going to uh, gonna go after big game free agents? agent? No. I, I, just, I don't think that's how this team works because as much as Weltman kind of gave a clue to what they expect for this team from in the, in the very near future, he also said, we're not going to skip steps in our process. We're still going to go through the draft process. We're still going to 
act like we're taking these two picks and look to add the best player we can. I, I don't think it changes the Magic's draft philosophy or draft strategy. They are still going to do them. They are still going to do the things they need to do. The question or, or the difference now is, are they going to, or, or, or the difference now is how that rookie is treated when he arrives in Orlando. What kind of opportunities are in front of him? And again, that is a big sign of growth. That is a big, big, big step for this team. Being 500 doesn't feel real special. If a team that won 22 games last season, not this season, last season, 2022 season, getting to 500 is a big step. And it's a sure sign that the Magic do believe they have enough to improve. You know, as Weltman said Monday, a big goal for this team is just to get better internally. Derek, you know, Weltman said it as clearly as I've heard him say it. They expect some of their young players to make sizable leaps this se- this offseason. And again, that's why I kind of think the Magic will be a little bit more conservative as well because I think they want some of these guys that they've invested in to, to prove themselves, to have the opportunity to, to prove it and prove whether they belong or, or what they're capable of doing, to get a chance to see what they look like under playoff pressure. For the first time in a while, Magic management seem you know without being strict or setting expectations or limits seems to be laying down that gauntlet and as we enter the draft it becomes clear what the magic believe they can accomplish and what the magic believe they can do and now we'll see if they can indeed execute it we're going to talk about two big man prospects the rest of the show. Uh, some guys that we definitely need to talk about so I'm going to sneak them in here. We'll get to Jarris Walker and Derek Lively coming up in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at BetterHelp. This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp. Let me make sure I have my copy because this stuff is important. We all need time for ourselves. Um, Sometimes it can be really difficult to make time for ourselves. I know sometimes like I feel really obligated to all of you to make sure I put a, put out a podcast every day to make sure I'm writing content every day. That mock draft is coming. I promise. Um, it can be difficult sometimes to take a step back and think about you and, and, and think about all the changes in your life and, and how to handle them uh, in a healthy way and, and to make sure that you take care of yourself. Well, that's what therapy does. It allows you to learn how to take care of yourself. It gives you a sympathetic ear to help you take care of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge if that one's not working out. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA for BetterHelp today. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us. Uh, Don't forget to check out the Locked On NBA Mock Draft Special. It is here and it is bigger than ever. You can follow along the entire first round in a six-episode ultimate mock draft experience that only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on Locked On NBA Big Board, on YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to, I explain the rationale behind my picks. I got appropriately roasted when I saw the magic media. Once again, um, you can, you can listen, you can listen to my explanation for my picks on Friday's episode of locked on magic. The six pick uh, episodes also on our feed. Plus I did a mock draft with Jonathan Osborne of the six man show yesterday. It is a two part episode, about 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes. The first one, 20 minutes. The second one um, that is on our feed, our previous two episodes Check those out today. We got you plenty covered before the NBA draft, so definitely check all of those out. But let's dive back in and talk about prospects um, because we've been a little bit lagging on our prospect reviews. You could go back into our library and, and, and find find us talking about some of the prospects in this draft. 
I know I have been big on on the posts and the bigs this offseason. Um, I think I am been banging the drum the loudest that backup center is probably the most most critical need for most critical immediate need for the Orlando Magic if they want to make the playoffs next year. And and look, I will admit in my mo- in the locked on mock draft, I was a little too obsessed with making the playoffs. Um, but I am still a big believer that that is a goal for this team. Uh, and so I think that it is something that the Magic are going to have to address one way or another. We've gone through some options. We talked with Keith Smith of Spot Track last week with some free agent options. But there are obviously some interesting options in the draft. And probably the highest level big outside of Victor Wembanyama, who is not coming to the Orlando Magic this season, um, probably the best big in this draft is Houston's Jarris Walker. Um, Jarris Walker is a honestly a, a super interesting prospect. Um, there is a lot to like about him and a lot that I think we still don't completely know about him a- as a player. At the end of the day, what the Magic are always looking for is versatility. That That's like the big buzzword. Um, the league loves it right now um, because you want guys who have – Positional versatility can play multiple positions, defend multiple positions. That's that's that when most players think, when most teams think about what position you play, it's not what you play on offense anymore. It's what you play on defense. It's who you can defend. Um, and so having positional versatility is, is big. So is having skill versatility. And I don't think we talk enough about skill versatility, but with the way the NBA finals went with the Denver Nuggets and now looking at how the Magic are building themselves, Skill versatility, I think, is just as important as positional versatility. It's one thing to have a center, for instance, who can defend out on the perimeter on pick and rolls. It's another thing to have a center who can defend out on the perimeter and pick and rolls, but can also work the high post as a passer, who can bring the ball up the floor. The Magic have these in Paolo Bencaro and Franz Wagner. They have... A Markel Fultz who can get into the get into the post and work the post a little bit. They have uh, Wendell Carter who I think is an excellent high post passer. Um, you know Jonathan Isaac when he's healthy you can throw him anywhere and he'll he'll make things happen. Positional versatility is great. Skill versatility is just as valuable. And, and I think that is where Jarris Walker really falls. Like he is he fits the de- definition of versatility in so many ways and, and in so many ways that are important in this league. The numbers on, on Jairus Walker are interesting. 11.2 points per game, 6.8 rebounds per game, 1.3 blocks per game, shooting splits of 46.5, 34.7, 66.3. We'll return those in a minute. And his measurement, six foot six and a half without shoes with a seven foot two and a half inch wingspan. Really, really impressive stuff. So this is a guy who is undersized, but I think we'll be able to play certainly the four in the NBA. He's probably a four in the NBA. Um, but I think at times we'll be able to defend centers. He is a big dude, um, big and strong, very tough to move off the block. And most importantly, he is super smart. Um, I- I'm going to give you my thoughts on, on Jairus overall uh, for the Magic in a minute. But regardless of which team drafts him, Jairus Walker is has one of the higher basketball IQs in this draft. He, he is not afraid to just be a screen setter. He, he, like, the way I would describe Jairus Walker's play is he is a connector. He makes a lot of pieces work around him, and he will make pieces and players work better because of him because he's going to set that screen. He's going to roll to the basket hard. He's going to sit in the dunker spot and make a play. He's going to get the ball in the middle of the lane and make the right pass. He consistently makes those good decisions over and over and over and over again. He is certain. I think I I agree with a lot of people that he is a better offensive player than when he showed at Houston. This is the role they needed him to play, but he could take the ball a little bit off the dribble, not overly fast, but he could take the ball a little bit off the dribble and get downhill and still make the right decision on the move. That's, that's, that's a huge thing too, is being able to make the right decision on the move. Um, This is a guy, this is a guy who, again, just, he is a connector. He makes all the pieces around him make a little bit more sense. Um, and, and I think it, like comparing him to Draymond Green is unfair because Draymond Green's a very, very good player, a Hall of Fame player. Jairus Walker is of that make. 
Um, I don't think he has quite the mobility or, or, or versatility that Green had coming out of college, but Walker is, isn't too far behind it. Um, and, and that's why he's so valuable. It, it's, it's, you can, you know, it, it's almost like it doesn't matter where you put him or what, what role you put him in for the most part. He is going to thrive in it. He's going to figure it out and he's going to make the players around him better. That's why Jarris Walker is a top 10 pick despite the, the, the shooting numbers. It's because all the other little things that he does makes everything make sense. If the Magic draft Jarris Walker, which, you know, which again, um, uh, uh, our friend Jonathan Osborne did yesterday in our, in our mock draft exercise, um, it's not a bad pick at all. He makes a, he, he will make everyone else make a lot more sense. Having said that, Jarris Walker is probably the one player in, in the top of this draft class that I just I just don't think is a good fit for this Magic team. Um, and I know I've said that repeatedly, and, and look, you're free to be, please feel free to disagree with me. I don't, th I think Jarris Walker is the one player at the top of this draft that just, it doesn't quite make sense. Obviously, the Magic needs shooting. Uh, and Jarris Walker does not project as a good shooter. Um, he can shoot a little bit from the corners of the college level, but that free throw percentage, 70.6%, that scares me, that I don't think he'll be able to extend out to the NBA level. I think early on in his career, it's just going to be a lot of dump-offs, stuff at the dunker spot. Teams are going to play way off him. And while I think Walker is smart enough to figure out how to beat it, um, with this Magic team specifically, with the guards that they have, with the poor shooting that they have, I, I don't like the way I would describe it is I don't think the magic would get the most out of Jairus Walker in his skill. And I don't think Jairus Walker would be able to, to help the magic as much as he could other teams. They're just better fits out there. Um, and I think, you know, it, not that the magic would be wrong to pick him. He's very, very good. Like, I think he's going to be very successful. No matter. He's got to find a way to be successful wherever he ends up. I just think there are better picks out there for the magic. Um, for what they probably need to accomplish and and what will help them kind of take that next step that, that, that they're talking about and, and to, to meet, meet meet that new phase. Um, a more complete team, yes, Walker would be perfect for this for that for that group because he he will help everyone get better by freeing that little extra bit of space by making that right pass at the right moment. Um, so maybe he is the right pick because the magic do love basketball IQ. But I think they're I think I think that I think that there are better fits for this team. Um, you know, there are you know an Anthony Black who's also not a great shooter. Uh, I think would be a better fit for this team because of the defense he brings on the perimeter. Because he does have a little bit of a floater game, he can get into the lane a little bit more. He can do a few more things offensively um, that would boost and kind of hide some of his defense, his his off his shooting deficiencies as well. As well as he's probably the best perimeter defender in this draft. Walker is very very good. So. If, if that analysis doesn't rub you the right way, though that, I, you know, I see why people really, really like him and why people would like him for this Magic team. He's a very, very good player. But I think there is, I think the Magic should be looking in other directions and other places um, to make this work. We'll finish off today's show talking about Derek Lively, one of the more interesting, uh, probably the only other interesting center prospect in this draft class. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends at Ibotta. See, I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time, and there's a pronouncer right here on my copy that says Ibotta. Uh, we're always throwing money at something, whether it's school supplies, new house project, the list really goes on. So it's time to stop spending your hard-earned money without getting anything in return. Enter Ibotta. You can earn cash back on every shopping trip. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's really that easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year in real cash back. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. Or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. A typical basket of groceries was more than $50 more expensive at the end of 2022 than the beginning of the year due to inflation. You could earn two and a half times that in cash back from Ibotta or even more, depending on how much you use it. Ibotta gives you real cash back, not points. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you got real cash back. 
that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta users, right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five dollars just to tr- just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code Locked. That's Ibotta, I B O T T A. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use code Locked today. So let's wrap up today's show by talking about a prospect that, that I do think the Magic will look very closely at at 11 and a player who could help fill a key need for the Orlando Magic and a player that I think is a little bit underappreciated and, and certainly kind of taking some steps up here in the pre-draft process. And that is Derek Lively from Duke. Um, Duke obviously just had, they were good. They still made the NCAA tournament. They came here to Orlando, um, but they had a really rough year despite all the recruits that they got. Dark Whitehead missed a good chunk of the season. And Derek Lively struggled to make an immediate impact or just a very, very clear impact. He was the number two rated prospect in this draft class entering the season, uh, the number two prospect coming out of high school, but only managed to average 5.2 points per game, 5.4 rebounds per game, and 20.6 minutes per game. Instead, what Lively became was sort of what Jaron Jackson Jr. was, and I think there is a good comparison to make, not to be prisoners to comparisons. There's a really good comparison to make to Jaron Jackson Jr. coming out of Michigan State. At Michigan State, if you remember, Jaron Jackson Jr. came off the bench, was kind of the energy guy, just flew around, blocked shots. That was his role on a more veteran Michigan State team. The difference between Jackson, why Lively's at the 11 pick and Jackson's at the, went, went number two, Jackson was a lot more productive. Jackson has that outside, had the outside shot and the shooting to kind of match up with, with that. Not that Lively isn't beginning to show some hints of outside shooting. We'll get to that in a minute. What Lively brings you, though, almost immediately, is he is an elite shot blocking prospect. Um, this is a guy who, in 20 minutes per game, was averaging one, two blocks per game. He has a seven foot seven wingspan, and he's going to immediately make an impact defensively. At Duke, he showed an ability to go out of his space to challenge shots on the weak side, um, the ability to dig out rebounds, the ability to challenge multiple shot attempts on one possession. He uses, he knows how to use his length. Um, and, and that's obviously a really difficult thing to do, especially for kind of younger big players. Um, the offensive polish is going to come. Right now, his offensive game is really nothing more than putbacks, at least what he showed at the college level. But the word around the workout circuit is that he has been displaying an improved jump shot. And if that's the case, that could be something worth investing. in. Again, it's about investment still. That could be something that teams say, you know, we believe this jump shot is going to come, is going to develop. Let's put some money into it or let's let's develop that out a little bit more. Let's see what we can, we can do with it. Um, I, I think that Lively... I think Lively is a really, you know, one of those like energetic center prospects that you see all the time. Long limbed, fouled a lot in college as a freshman. So if he can get, if he could get the discipline to know when to just challenge a shot and when to go for a block, you know, not bite on things, that could be the difference for him in his career. This guy is really, really talented. Bottom line, he is really, really, really talented. He can get out on the perimeter a little bit and hold the zone. He's smart in picking rolls. He he can recover to the roll man pretty quickly. And look, he's going to have the usual struggles that big men have when they enter the NBA. But this is a this is a guy that I think plays above his station. Um, I, I I think Lively Lively does a lot of really good things, just, just plain and simple. Does a lot of really, really good things. Uh, and, and if you believe in the rim protection of the defense, both big needs for the Orlando Magic, by the way, Lively is a good value pick at 11. Because this kid obviously was number two in his recruiting class, just a year ago. That to me, that we know the Magic do like to draft players who are good high school players. That talent doesn't go away. You know, those you you look back at some of those predictions, they guys may jump around a little bit, but very rarely are they that far off. You know, guys that make it in the NBA are usually top high school prospects. It's not hard to see this coming. So there's clearly something people saw in lively that just need maybe needed maybe a little bit more time to get out. And, you know, again, the shooting development is certainly an encouraging, encouraging thing to hear. This is a guy that's going to come in 
and, and almost immediately be a, a factor at the rim. He's just so long and big, and he's mobile. He's not like Mo Bamba. He can, he can take a hit. Um, this is a guy that's going to protect the rim and, and be a paint presence. And look, he'll make rookie mistakes, all rookies do, but you're investing in the long term with him, and the long term does look really good. It, it As much as I've said the Magic need to make sure they get shooting in this draft, it would not surprise me if the Magic do take Derek Lively at 11. Uh, I think he fits a lot of needs this team has. They can develop him. They could probably play Wendell Carter next to him a little bit too. Uh, and so I think that this is a guy to keep an eye on, and this is a guy that the Magic do have their eyes on ahead of the NBA draft. That's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked Up Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in Himmel, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the places on podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Like I said, we have a post coming up uh, with some trade paths that the Magic can go down. Our friend Harrison Brown uh, wrote that up, so please don't yell at me for making bad trades this time. Uh, but again, the exercise of any fake trade posts that I that I like to put out is to kind of explore opportunities and explore frameworks and, and explore needs. So hopefully we do that. I'll be coming out with fresh mock draft, my final mock draft uh, coming up uh, hopefully tomorrow. I'm, I'm still I'm kind of working slowly through it. I'm kind of asking one big question for each team. So we'll go over a little bit of that mock draft probably in, in a very, uh, probably on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic since that's what I'll be spending my day focusing on. Um, and so we'll get to some of the prospects that we haven't talked about yet before we have our final word on Wednesday. So if you're part of my everyday career, you have that looked forward to tomorrow. Don't forget to also check out my subtext. I'll be revealing uh, the, my, 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 the, my mock draft early on subtext. I'll reveal my picks on there. So definitely join that. Join subtext.com slash locked on magic. I gave my thoughts on the Jeff Weltman presser immediately after it ended there. I'll do the same on draft night. So if you want to try out subtext, Draft night is your night. Now is the time to sign up. You get a two-week free trial um, before you have to start subscribing. I'm going to try to make it worth your while. Um, but you get a two-week free trial. So sign up today. You get the draft. You get the early parts of free agency. You'll get all my reaction immediately to everything before I start writing it on the site, before I do it on the podcast. If you want to hear what I have to think early, subtext is your way to go. Join subtext.com slash magic to check it out today. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.